limo tent, 85 with cams and the ACs on. Who said you can't daily in eight or nine? If you guys watching are super OG, you guys may or may not recognize this location. There it is, two of my favorite things. Intercoolers and coffee. This place would be so killer to have a car meet, dude. I want to host a car meet so bad, you guys. You don't even know. All right, guys, so as you can see, I rented out this entire parking structure just for us to be able to film this video. Not really, we're actually at a college called Cal Poly. I was gonna go to my old school Mount Sac where I've taken you guys a couple times, but it was all gated off because I guess apparently did like a drive-by graduation today or something or some kind of ceremony. There were tons of cops, super bust. This is literally down the street from there, so this is also super bust. So there actually is a really good chance that a cop or a campus security will come any moment to kick us out. But if you guys clicked on today's video, you guys are potentially in the market for your first Evo 8, 9, or 10. Dude, that was crazy. And you want a couple of tips on what to look out for when purchasing the car. This is something that really no one out there has really put out. I know a couple of other YouTubers or people have said some kind of tips. I kind of wanted to put my own thing out there just because I've seen a couple of things that uh, kind of were missed or not talked about. So behind me, in case you guys are new to my videos, we have a 2006 Lance Revolution. It is an Evo 9 SE. Um, I'm not really going to go into detail about what the differences are because I've said it a million times and I'm sure if you're a repeat viewer, you're kind of overhearing me repeat over and over what the differences are of this car. But we're going to jump straight into it though. So tip number one, and this is huge, especially for whether you're buying the Evo 8, 9, or 10 or 1 through 7, because for some reason all my viewers bash me for not recognizing the 1 through 7, even though they weren't ever sold in the United States. Um, if you guys have the opportunity to cold start it, so it being completely cold, uh, not obviously warmed up or anything, or from a test drive or whatever um, cold start it look for any signs of smoking any type of leakage um, especially on a cold start too if there's any smoking from the engine bay or smoking come out coming out the exhaust um, it'll be a really good sign of uh, you know if anything's wrong like the turbos on the way out or if the rings are gaka um, especially too because depending on the issue sometimes it'll smoke more on a cold start than it will when the car's actually warmed up so some people when they're being shady or trying to hide certain things they'll actually try to have the car warmed up before a buyer or a potential buyer comes and sees the car and then so that way when they see it um you know if it's minor smoking or anything they could say oh i just washed it or it's got detail product in it or anything like that and make up whatever you know bs and tip number two and i'm going to try to juggle back and forth between um, the specific chassis i'll try to obviously point out what's specific to the eight and nine um, and then obviously what's a little more specific to the ten um, so something for the eight and nine this is especially mine or my brake calipers are painted so this is kind of uh excluded from my car but if you guys are looking at the brembo brakes um, that are on the eight and nine if they're really worn or faded um, that's actually a really good indicator that the car potentially could have been tracked or beaten um Obviously, if you're if you're from Southern California like I am, or you live somewhere where it's really sunny and the car's kept outside, that also could make the brakes, uh, the brake calipers fade as well. But typically, it's a good indicator that the car could have potentially been tracked, which is why the brakes got super hot and then the paint started to fade. Tip number three. Uh, this is for the 8, 9, and 10. Uh, if the seats have been swapped out. So in my car, if you guys don't know much about Evos, these are not the OG Evo 9 seats. These are Evo 8 seats that have been swapped into a 9 because this car definitely had aftermarket seats in it. Either that or someone replaced or pulled the Evo 9 SE seats out, put these seats on, and someone, uh, you know, paid cash and they traded or whatever. Uh, but typically, if the seats are missing from the car, it's a very good indicator that I could have had aftermarket seats, uh, you know, for track use, things like that. So tip number three, um, I don't know how clearly you guys are going to be able to see it back here, but for the resistor pack in an Evo 8-9, 
typically those get removed when people run bigger injectors uh, mine had clearly been wired back in so that is a huge indicator that this car was definitely running some kind of bigger injector like a 1600 cc or even bigger than that um, but the main thing to look out for is any weird wiring that has clearly been soldered or anything unfortunately i don't have my stock maf on anymore because i'm speed density on this car but if i could show you how bad the maf was soldered back in because this car previously had speed density which if you guys aren't familiar with that basically people delete the oem maf because it's kind of trash for uh, making power or getting any accurate readings for big levels of boost in air so people typically get rid of it um so that's a huge indicator to any sketchy wiring or anything like that it looks like it's been re-added in because oem wiring or anything that came with the car it won't look super sketchy um it's very very obvious another thing i would personally recommend too if you guys can um look at pictures or maybe if you have a friend or someone you know um, or videos or reference of a stock engine bay so that way when you go look at uh, Evo 9, 8, 9 or 10, God I'm going to have a tongue twister, I keep saying that, uh, to look at the engine bay of it because if you can see any bolts that have been clearly removed or stock heat shields or anything like that you can always kind of tell um, if a car has been put back to stock especially because if bolts have been turned um, if there's anything missing uh, especially stock heat shields too because a lot of stuff is kind of difficult to put back together um, especially um, on newer cars because newer cars come with so many weird heat shields and trims and things like that so removing all that and then adding all of it 100 percent to oem typically is kind of a pain in the ass Another thing too, and this is kind of just all used cars in general, um, you can check the VIN number for fenders. So obviously you see a VIN label here. I'm not going to show you my VIN just obviously for privacy purposes, but um, my VIN there. And then obviously when you open up the door jam, you guys will obviously see the VIN down here. Now, when you guys are looking at a used car, obviously it's very good to invest in a auto check or Carfax or anything like that. And uh, one thing that you want to check as well is making sure that all the VINs match for the car. Just because if a VIN is different for a fender or door, it's very, um, it's very likely that the car possibly got hit, which is why the previous owner replaced it. Um, auto check and Carfax aren't going to show every single accident the car has been in. A lot of people think it has, which isn't true. It's only going to show accidents that have been reported. So. If someone, let's say, got hit in the Vons parking lot or at the grocery store or whatever, and they said, hey, fool, I'll give you a thousand bucks, we'll take the car to my Uncle Tito's shop, we'll spray it there, and we'll call it a day, that's not going to show up on auto check. You're going to kind of have to physically look at a light or have the car in specific lighting so that we can check for any orange peel or any uh, weird uh, sections of the car that one may be like a darker paint and one's lighter. It's pretty obvious to tell when certain panels are repainted just because the paint is so fresh compared to the body that's kind of dull. Another thing to check for too, I know you guys are wondering probably um, when driving the car, so Evos are known for having really, really notchy transmissions and the 8 and 9, there's a lot of people break transmissions too just because the drivetrain is kind of the weak point of the car. Obviously people have made globs of power on the 4G63 um, and even the 4B11 now, but one thing to check for, um, two ways to check for drivetrain components being kind of on their way out, I guess you could say, or that could potentially need repair is uh, when test driving the car, definitely be able to do some pulls, you know, um, be able to do like a second through fourth pull or one through fourth or whatever, and be able to shift kind of aggressively. If it grinds going into gear, um, it could be an indication that maybe some of the synchros are pretty worn. Basically, every Evo 8 and 9 has had the shit kicked out of it since 2003. So, obviously, if it's been driven wide open throttle majority of the time, you want to make sure that, obviously, the components are good. But be able to slam it in gear, uh, do some pulls in it, see how it is shifting a little more aggressively. Sometimes driving it normally, it's not going to lock itself out or, um, you know, show signs that it's not going into gear. Now... There are a couple of fixes with um, the stock OEM setup that kind of fix the gear grinding issues. Number one is a weighted shift knob that's huge, um, especially because the stock OEM shifter is so light and because the transmission is so notchy, you definitely want to add a weighted shift knob. If, even if you have an Evo now and you don't have one, I'd highly recommend it. Um, number two, you can do solid bushings, especially on the 8 and 9. Uh, STM sells a bushing upgrade for like $40 and it's supposed to be a 90 day difference. I myself haven't done it, but I've driven other cars with it. It is a really good upgrade and that's something actually I want to do before installing the new turbo kit on this car. Um, and then number three, is the gear oil so the oem stuff is pretty bad typically people upgrade to the redline mtl stuff or they obviously make the redline cocktail i think it's like one uh one quart of mt90 and then another one of mtl i believe don't quote me on that i forgot but the gear oil makes a night and day difference because i had stock gear oil on this car 
when I first got it and then I switched to the red line stuff and it was a huge, huge difference. So um, don't fully get discouraged. If it's obviously like popping out of gear or something, then yeah, there's something wrong. But if it grinds a little bit going into gear, especially um, fourth gear, fifth gear and the eight and nine, um, it could be that, you know, the person selling it hasn't like serviced the car recently or maybe enough. But yeah, definitely look into the solid bushings. Definitely look into the weighted shift knob and absolutely invest in the red line fluid. It will be a night and day difference for your Evo. Another thing too, when test driving your Evo, be sure to take this car on the freeway, uh, you know, obviously for all of the Evos, because you want to get it up to highway speed so that way you can listen for the transfer case whining. Um, it's very common for the T case to go out, especially if it's been launched a bunch and uh, if someone who doesn't know what they're doing launches it in the incorrect way, it could very easily break the transfer case. So you want to be able to go up to higher speeds so that way you can he listen for the T-case whine. Um, it, typically driving around city, it isn't that noticeable, but if you do a pull or get it up to speed, you know, or get on the highway, it should be much more audible. Again, you want to avoid uh, any costly repairs if you can, so obviously listen for that T-case whine. Another thing Evo 8, 9 specific that I don't think anyone's ever mentioned on YouTube is, uh, so... A lot of people always go crazy about my car, so if you guys look, oh, hold on, the Bluetooth's gonna turn on, no. If you look right here, the three lights for tarmac, gravel, and snow are all on, and everyone always freaks out saying, oh, your ACD pump is bad, oh, your ACD pump is bad. So, eight Evo 9 transfer cases have ACD, which uh, has a pump for the transfer case to allow you to switch between those three modes with a button that's literally located right here, literally says, ACD, you click it and it lets you toggle between tarmac, gravel, snow. Uh, my car came with an Evo 8 transfer case, so that's why all three lights are on because obviously there's no ACD pump. Because if you have an Evo 9 transfer case and you don't have an ACD pump, it literally will not work. Typically, if people break the 9 transfer case, they will uh, upgrade to the Evo 8 one because the pump is deleted and it's typically a little, a little more durable, especially for like drag racing and things like that. And also, you're deleting the pump, so it's one less thing to service and worry about adding fluid or exchanging it, things like that. But if those three lights are on, and it is an Evo 9 transfer case, which one of the ways you can tell is by looking through this front air duct here. I don't, obviously there's, you can see where there's nothing here, but if the Evo 9 ACD pump were to be anywhere, it actually is mounted right here, so you will see it. Um, so if you guys are looking at an Evo 9 and that light is on and you guys can look through this front air duct, which I just pointed out to you guys, and that light's on, then that's a problem. Oh, another thing too um, that is a little more 4G63 specific, um, there is a gear, I believe it's for the crank, uh, it's the crank something gear, I can't think of the actual technical term. I can't really show you from this angle, but it is on the timing side, which this is the left side of uh, the engine, because this is the timing cover, if you guys already know or didn't know. Um, there is a gear at the bottom that has a tendency to leak oil that I would definitely keep an eye out on. Um, also, uh, asking the previous owner, when the last time they did the 60k service so if you guys don't know the timing belt water pump balance shaft and the pulleys are all due every 60,000 miles it's not like honda toyota where you can run the timing belt for 100,000 miles at least that's what's recommended in the service manual mitsu uh recommends you change it every 60,000 miles which if you guys are like well why does that matter if that timing belt snaps while you're tuning your car or racing it or whatever, not only are you more than likely going to bend all the valves, but you could potentially really screw up the bottom end as well. Typically, from what I've seen, most people typically just bend all their valves and um, just have to do kind of a head job, which is a lot cheaper than obviously building a bottom end. But um, in some cases, it does end a lot more catastrophic than that. Yeah, so with these cars, it's really, really important to keep up with the maintenance. Um, obviously with the T-case exchange, the fluid exchanges, obviously changing your oil, especially if you're running ethanol. And make sure that freaking timing belt has been changed. Um, obviously I can't really show you because the timing cover is on, but you'll be able to tell if there's, um, you know, if the belt's ancient, you'll be able to tell and see a bunch of minute cracks in it and uh, signs of obvious wear. So be sure to get that belt changed, do the 60K service. It is kind of expensive and that's something you don't have to worry about on the 10. It is $680 for the OEM Evo 9 timing belt service. Or you can buy the Gates Evo 8 service, which is about 480 bucks on MAP Performance or STM. Um, and it is a little bit cheaper. I know uh, my buddy Lorenzo on his Evo 9, he's running the Gates water pump and the Gates Evo 8 timing stuff and hasn't really had much of an issue with it. Another thing too, if you find a Evo 8 or 9 that's pretty stock, 
um, you can actually remove the oil cap and look through the top and see if there's uh, stock head studs or if it has ARP head studs or any type of upgraded head stud in there. Um, obviously if it's a completely stock car, you take that oil cap off, you look inside and you find yourself some ARP head studs. The car definitely had some more boost thrown at it at some point and the person put it back to stock. So that's another obvious one to try to weed out people who have maybe full sent their car and then put it back to stock and you guys aren't really looking for that. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest with you too guys. Finding a really stock Evo 8, 9, or 10, you're going to have to A, have, either have to pay a really large premium in paying for a low mileage car or B, you're going to have to deal with things like that. Um, the head studs thing isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just so at least you guys know what you're getting into or what it is that you're looking at. Another really, really, really big tip that I don't think anyone has ever put out there on YouTube that I'm aware of is on the side of the block here if you guys see right here there is a VIN number which that's very clear to you guys right there that is a VIN that VIN number you guys see right there is not the VIN number to this car so what that means is this block is actually out of a different Evo that was put back in so that's another way I know that this car definitely was making some jam it probably had a built motor at some point and someone sold it or the previous owner sold it and then put back in the stock motor or bought a stock short block or maybe a used one I don't know but I think that's pretty much it guys um, I can't really of anything else the evo platforms are really really strong they're capable of a lot of things but you got to take care of the car and it'll take care of you and uh, that's a lot of things that people typically miss or neglect is they don't keep up with the maintenance and then the car starts falling apart and then they sell the car because they get over it um, or they go to a bad tuner and there's there's a lot that kind of goes into it that people fail to recognize it's really easy to play the blame game but you know, if you guys are watching this and you're in the market for an Evo 8, 9, or 10, I know that the pricing is a little crazy right now just because the car is discontinued. But believe me when I say, when you get your Evo after saving up or hunting or dealing with tons of people, it will totally be worth it. Um, even though this car has been a little bit of a pain in the ass because it is an older car. If you buy an Evo 10, you'll typically have less problems just because, again, it is newer. Um, but the 8, 9 is a lot more raw, more race car and... On the butt dyno, it feels faster. 400 horsepower in this car feels much faster than like 400 in a 10. Uh, but the 10 is faster for my VEC, dual my VEC and exhaust ports, or smaller exhaust ports and all types of things I'm not really going to go on, on about um, for certain ranges. But that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it helps you guys hunt for your first Evo and it makes it a little bit easier. Um, definitely, like I said, take the precautions. Pay for the auto check. Pay for the Carfax. Do some research. Um, if you guys are going to finance it too, what I would really recommend is looking into a credit union. Um, unless you guys have really, really strong credit and you've financed something before, then maybe you can finance through Chase, Bank of America, the bigger ones that offer the lower interest rates. Um, but if you're going to finance an 8 or 9, uh, definitely look with the credit union. Uh, number one, they'll more than likely get it done because they're a lot more lenient because they're member based. And number two, you're not going to hit with get hit with a crazy high interest rate, you know, like a normal bank would. Because typically, um, the bigger banks are going to want a ton of money down, and also the interest rate is typically higher because their goal is to make as much money off you. Versus the credit unions, like I said, they're more lenient, they're willing to give a better deal, and they'll approve older cars for less money down, which is really convenient. If you guys are you know, I'm sure some of you guys have the money to pay for the car up front, but if you want to put some money down and also save it aside to, you know, just keep money in your savings or have money for mods, I would highly recommend looking at a credit union if you guys don't have one already. So that's about it, guys. That pretty much wraps up all the tips I could think of off the top of my head that are pretty Evo specific. Definitely some really, really good information, like I said, that I don't think anyone out there has put out. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more Evo bangers coming your guys' way. I'm going to get you guys an update with my buddy Jesus's car, the 1,000 horsepower evo 10 and show you guys where it's been hiding and what's been going on with it uh, my buddy sam with his uh, thousand horsepower evo 8 drag build is about to come out too uh, we're gonna have a motor assembly video with that one very very soon and i will see you guys all on the next video peace out